Hi, I'm Gretchen. And I'm Becca. And we're two curious ladies on an adventure to learn more about cooking, cannabis, and the fine art of gluttony. Join us every 10 days or so as we get high and make our way through a recipe. Step inside and let the consumption begin. (laughs) Gretchen, hi. Becca, hello. How are you? I'm okay. We (laughs) have severely underestimated how long our prep time would take for us to get to this point of hitting record. Yeah, how how are you? <laughs> well, tired after doing about an hour to an hour and a half of prep to get to just starting our recording of Tortelloni Verdi, yeah. and our version of Tortelloni Verdi. <laughs> yes, we have taken a lot of twists and turns already to get to this <laughs> point before we've even really started what we're doing, because once again, we're cobbling things together. We have found a couple of recipes that we like, but made a lot of substitutions on the ingredients of that recipe those recipes here we are we'll get into all of that in a minute but we are making pasta always risky for Rebecca we're gonna see how it goes before we get into all of that what are you drinking over there Gretchen I am drinking a beautiful Riesling from my trip to Alsace that I took recently this is from Leon Bayer. They are a producer in Egesheim. And this is the Combs de Egesheim Grand Cru Fersigberg, I believe, is the pronunciation. <laughs> Pronunciations in Alsace are tricky. There's a lot of German to it. Hopefully I'm getting that correct, but it is an absolutely outstanding Riesling, and I'm very excited to drink it. What are you enjoying, Becca? Well, nothing as fancy as your Alsace Riesling. (laughs) I have the much more common Chateau (laughs) Saint-Wichel, the the everyday store one, because I do have a nice Forlorn Hope Riesling, but I just felt like for today's purposes, we were going to go simple across the board with our pasta with my drink and so that's what I'm enjoying it's delightful it's only 12 percent alcohol it's perfect what are you smoking while we get ourselves ready for this day I just restocked my joint collection because I had not done that since I got back had really bad allergies so I haven't felt like smoking until the end of this week really I've got from the Jeter brand baby Jeter joints Berry Punch, which is a new one for me. These are not infused. They do specialize in infused product, but this is not infused, which was nice because I got six of them in this jar instead of five. Yeah. What What are you enjoying today? I've got some Macmo strain from The Real McCoy. And this Mm -hmm. is a, they have a grow operation in Nevada and they do hydroponic growing, which is pretty cool. And this one has caryophylline, lemonine, humulene, myrcene, and 29% THC, and then a little bit of CBG. So very excited about this. And real quick side note, I keep meaning to tell you, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I saw something that said that the best way to benefit from CBD is to have some every day. And I just wanted to share that with you and everybody, because I need to work on that. I might be there. I've been doing a lot of (laughs) CBD lately. Excited to know that that is something I can continue to do. Yeah. Because I've done it. And I've done a lot of CBD. I took a nice CBD tincture with me to France to help with some of my pain stuff Then from Proof Brand. And it was just a pure a thousand milligrams of CBD in the bottles, pretty intense stuff, but it did seem to help me keep the pain down for, even though we went walking everywhere, <laughs> we walked a yeah. lot. I was in pretty good shape. I might be on board with this. A little CBD every day mm-hmm. goes a long way. Yeah. It's the new apple. <laughs> it is the new apple. <laughs> but we are not actually talking about apples today or even really going to keep talking about what we're smoking because what's on our mind is leeks. These little interesting little kind of onion things, they have 
a lot of similarities to things that we use every day from onions to shallots to garlics to chives, but they are a little unique and a little more seasonal than some of those other things. I think you can get them every year or year round, right, Gretchen? But they do have more of a peak window. Yes. Let's talk about leeks. Leek Let's chat. Leek chat. This is a <laughs> leaky chat. We've got a lot of leeks in this chat. It's going to be yeah. very sieve-like. <laughs> leaking here, leaking there. Let's go. Leak, leaking everywhere. <laughs> the nice thing about leeks is they are extremely cold tolerant and in most regions can be grown and harvested year round. It's really easy to grow at home. At one point, I somehow ended up with a bunch of leeks growing in my garden. Don't remember how <laughs> I ended up with a bunch of leeks in my garden. It's how most of the things come to be in my garden. There's always some <laughs> mystery of how it gets there. Plants to animals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't, I don't remember if it was like I had bought some to plant or, yeah. but yeah, for a while I had a nu- no, numerous leeks growing in my front yard. But they're all gone now. Easy to grow. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit more challenging to grow correctly, since one of the the mainstays of a leek is that there's a white portion. Uh, That is developed by just piling the dirt up around the actual leek itself and allowing that to, I believe they still call this blanch. It forces the chlorophyll up into the other parts of the leek for food production because there's no light that leaves a li- it makes a little bit sweeter on the the lower end that's white it's not quite as cabbagey is the description I came across for the upper portion which I thought was really interesting I don't know that I've spent a lot of time eating the top part of leeks that usually are peeled pretty significantly down from where there's a lot of green they're just an easy vegetable the main pain in the butt is that because you have to pile the dirt up around them, they get really dirty inside the leaves because that dirt goes over the top. There's something you have to clean pretty thoroughly, but the nice thing is they're pretty easy to clean as well. Like most of the dirt, they like a sandy, loose kind of soil that washes off pretty easily. That is good to know and fascinating about how it grows with that dirt compacted to keep the sun away from those little little delicate bits in the dirt but to describe a leak for anyone who hasn't come across one real quick what does a full leak look like because they're big and so it's kind of surprising if you haven't seen it in the wild of the grocery store even because (laughs) sometimes it's yeah some people haven't come across it so how would you describe a big leak they're a giant scallion Essentially, it's a very similar looking plant. Scallions, though, don't get as big. Like, I think they, they usually top out at about an inch across. And leeks can be anywhere from like a half an inch if you're picking them really young to like two and a half inches across. So they can be quite girthy, if I might use that word. Mm-hmm. Of <laughs> Got some good girth to them. They are in the allium family, so they are actually related to garlic and onion. And there is a leek that we've talked about this before when we talked about garlic, that elephant garlic that you find in the store is actually a leek. It's not garlic. Is it like the bulb of the the leek? Yes. Oh, it's okay. Most leeks don't develop any kind of bulb at the bottom. You might see a little bit of like a hoop at the end next to the root area. (laughs) Really descriptive. It's a very vertical plant. There's little horizontal spread, which is why it's easy to grow. They don't have huge root systems. They can grow in a small amount of space. Okay, that makes sense because even though they can get a little bit wide, they're not any, they would, they're not nearly the same width as like a celery no talking about since we talked about celery and celery root last week but it wouldn't be as wide as that so you could get a lot in one space so they do they look like a big scallion they've got a little bit of root system at the base like Gretchen said and then the bottom I think kind of does look like a celery base almost it's white and one unit 
and then as you go up the stalk towards the top it tur- it starts to turn a light green as you go mm-hmm. and then as you get more and more higher it gets darker and darker and so you're saying that's that chlorophyll impact like the higher the plant part is the more sunshine it's getting yes okay. <laughs> it's getting darker right yes okay that's supposed to be the star of the day and do you want to say how we're going to use it since we're not well, using all of that even though we have described this big plant this big thing so I did end up using the tops of mine as part of my the pasta dough that we're going to make we're making a green pasta dough so this is, is also a little bit new for us because it's a, a green pasta dough I've never made one of these so and we have already, as we said, done quite a bit. So we have a lot to talk about. So we chopped up the lower portion and we sauteed that after we washed it really, really well. And I did have to wash mine like three times to get all the grit off of them. Packed in dirt. <laughs> yep, packed in dirt. <laughs> the lower white portion went into a cre- the cream sauce. We just sweat those out lightly and then added some stock and then pureed that. And so it's sort of a creamy white sauce. The upper portions that are green went into making our green pasta dough, or at least mine. Becca's didn't end up going into her pasta dough, but that's okay. She's She's got the leek sauce and a little bit of leek in her filling as well, because we are making a tortelloni. We're using it a ton of ways today, and it has multiple applications then, obviously, just evidenced by what you said. But just in general, leeks can be used as a filler, as a thickener, I think you told me that it do, it does thicken really well for sauces and soups and stuff. And probably yeah. because more there's a lot of it. There's other reasons too, I'm sure. There is a fair amount of it when you're using a leek versus like a garlic or a scallion. Ah, but as far as proportion of plants goes. Sorry, I was mm-hmm. trying to figure out where you were going with that train of thought and I was not quite following until now. You're right. You can use more of the plant itself than like if you're using the garlic where you're like only using that bottom part although you can you can eat garlic tops that's not a big deal but today especially we are using like the full spectrum but most people kind of discard any of the tops because they do get kind of woody at a certain point so you usually will chop off the really thick of it and then only use the the more tender parts and those are tend to be the stuff that was under the dirt mm-hmm That makes sense. I saw a note that said, I don't remember if it was in one of the recipes we looked at or in something else, but it said to save those tops and put them in your broth. Yeah. Making broth. Yeah. So that is a good use too. It's a good use of it. Additionally, the reason that leeks work so well in like a soup and a stew is that they have these long chain carbohydrates that when they get cooked, develop a bit of a slimy texture. I think leeks are not for everyone as far as if you're eating like just a a leek. I also like grilled like scallions. I'm a leek freak, scallion freak. A leek freak. (laughs) Oh, we got herb nerd, leek freak, merch. We've got merch. We finally can make two things. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) But that... Those carbohydrates then can interact with the water, thicken up soups, thicken up stews. I think I saw some effect from these carbohydrates today when I was making my green stuff to go in my pasta dough. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I didn't actually know that that was why they were slippery like that. And that was why they were good in soups and stews and things is that they have those extra thickeners in them. Kind of exciting to find out there's another benefit to a leak. Yeah, I didn't know that either. And it it does remind me of a potato when you cut inside of it and it has that little bit of slipperiness too. And right. so it makes sense that you say it's a, a carbohydrate because potatoes are carbs. Exactly. Awesome. <laughs> now we know the leek is a carb. It's going to thicken things. It's very versatile. It does have a lot of good benefits for you. It's got a lot of antioxidants and vitamins. So it's very versatile. We're going to use it in a lot of ways. And we did say that we're doing a little bit of a hodgepodge recipe situation here. 
And our original source comes from FoodWise. This is an online recipe, and it's tortellini verde, tortellone verde with ricotta, field greens, and creamed turnips, which obviously we have not mentioned turnips. Just been talking about leeks. That's our first big derailment. Then we are also, I am also using an eggless pasta dough recipe what why don't we make everything super complicated and so that (laughs) comes that comes from aleanmade.com and it's basic pasta dough and they both make about four to five servings Gretchen want to read our original pasta dough recipe and then fill in our adjustments there okay The original pasta dough recipe called for four bunches of turnip greens, 140 grams of egg yolks, which we discovered is about 12. 240. What did I say? 140. Uh, Just a lot. A shitload of egg yolks either way. A lot of egg yolks, yeah. So 240 grams of egg yolks, which is approximately 12 eggs. Then 500 grams of OO or double zero pasta flour, or approximately four cups, and a pinch of salt. I might have more than a pinch in mine. Right. So that's the original. And we already said we're not doing turnip. So what are we doing instead? We wanted to do turnip, but we were concerned about the availability of turnip. But then last week, we found out we had to be because we were worried about celery or not worried about celery availability to bit us in the ass. And so we jumped ahead in this one and said, let's not worry about finding turnips because they might be a hard find. Turns out, no, but fine, fine. Here we are. (laughs) We are substituting arugula and mine is going to also have the green parts of the leek. So instead of the egg yolks for me, the recipe I'm using is a combination of all-purpose flour and semolina with some olive oil and cold water. We'll explain this a little bit more when we get into the steps of the recipe, but instead of using the eggs, I'm basically using water and olive oil as my substitution. Okay. All right, so that's dough. And then, because we're making these cute little tortellini. (laughs) Tortellonis. We're making tortellonis. Cute little tortellonis. We are going to fill them. So let's talk about what's in our filling. Maybe we should just briefly mention that I keep correcting you and saying tortelloni because there is a difference between tortellini and tortelloni. It's minor. Tortelloni are larger. Tortellini are smaller. Literally minor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got you. Tortelloni. 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 So these are going to be larger. The filling for these guys has two cloves of garlic minced, two shallots sliced. Actually, two, let's say two shallots. No, we'll talk about that. Two shallots sliced, three tablespoons of high quality California olive oil, very specific, one bunch of flouring mustard, two cups whole milk ricotta cheese, and zest of one lemon, salt and pepper to taste. So instead of flouring mustard, because Becca lives in Las Vegas and can't just wander out into a, you know, a vineyard to find a bunch of mustard. Uh huh. Not anymore. We are substituting broccoli rob instead. We thought that would be kind of a fun substitution. Might have a little have a little bit of spice to it, a little bit of bitterness, but I think a good substitution. I am also substituting some green garlic in my pasta filling for the two cloves of garlic because I found it at the farmer's market this morning and I couldn't resist. Yum. See, we're doing whatever we want. We're just doing it. Just do it. Do it. This has a sneaky, sneaky leek cream sauce that has no cream and what's in that (laughs) we have one shallot sliced one tablespoon of butter two bunches of peeled and sliced turnip roots was the original recipe but we are using leeks instead and a half cup of vegetable stock or water salt to taste leeks everywhere like we said I ended up putting leeks into my filling on accident and not my dough so that's that's also happening (laughs) we are all over the place but should we say what we've done now or should we talk through 
the steps. Let's see what we've done because that'll kind that'll give them a a good idea of like what steps are involved. Mm -hmm. We started by blanching our greens for the pasta dough and then blending those with our respective liquids. Mine was the egg yolks and yours was the water. So you have a very nice, bright green, beautiful, watery substance. Very and thin. I, yep. very thin. I ended up making an egg foam by mistake. <laughs> I think our, our friendly little carbohydrates and leaks probably okay. contributed to this situation. I'm real intrigued to see what happens with this pasta dough when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. I have to make a bit of a... Yeah. Yeah, we have the totally opposite. You're like, this is so thin. And I was like, that's probably a good thing. Cause look, I made fluff. We did puree our okay. respective liquids and then strained them through a strainer. A mesh Fine strainer. strainer. Yes. Fine strainer. And I nearly lost my mind trying to get my foam to go through the strainer. Lots of scraping. Lots of scraping. We have also made our cream sauce already. So we started by sauteing. We sliced our leeks, so they were all sliced up, washed them, then dried them as thoroughly as possible, sauteed the sliced white parts in some butter, and then with the shallot, added the stock, and then pureed that with a stick blender. And I'm straining mine because it was also quite thick from the leaks again. I'm not going to strain mine. I did end up adding a little bit extra stock before the, I pureed it. Because Probably a good call. I was kind of worried about the ratio too of pasta to sauce. Like I mentioned that earlier. I just want a lot of sauce all the time. So mm. I just add a little bit extra. But mine's again a little bit thinner. So we'll see. <laughs> but if you strain yours, they might end up the same. So we're halfway into our pasta process, basically. We've finished our sauce. It's it's just sitting, waiting for its partner in pasta to arrive. Then the last portion that we have to work on and have started is the filling. Yes. So we sliced up some leeks or and or shallot. <laughs> yeah. And minced or sliced up the garlic. And we sauteed all those things together. We had also chopped up the broccoli rabe and added that into that mix and sauteed that until it just bolted down some. I also added a little bit of arugula to mine. Mm. A little bite. Yeah. And mine has leeks. <laughs> and yours has leeks because I was like, there's something special about yours. <laughs> I forgot. And we're going to mix that with a little bit of uh, ricotta later. But we wanted to give it plenty of time to cool down before we mixed it with the cheese. Mm -hmm. We did also, after we cooked all of that up, the, the garlic, the shallots, the broccoli rabe, the leeks, and what was the other thing you added? Arugula. Arugula. Once that had cooled a little bit, we did chop it up more. We The recipe did say cook the garlic and shallots. Then chop it up, put it back in the pan, add the chopped broccoli, Rob. And we were like, no, dumb, no. And then later we were like, oh, this is the filling. We actually don't want like a big piece of leek in one of the tortellonis. We did chop all of that up and it is in the bowl ready to go waiting for that ricotta to join. Yes. That took a long time. That yeah. took... Like forever. It was a lot of chopping. It was a lot of me asking Gretchen, like, well, part of the broccoli rabe do we use? Which also, by the way, we both got rapini. And I guess that's the same thing as broccoli rabe. But I did not use that center, more fibrous, thick part of my broccoli rabe. I just used the leaves and the florets. And Gretchen's wasn't as woody, so she used a little bit more of hers. But otherwise, like we said, that's a lot. Now that we have caught everyone up to what we've done, what are we going to do when we move into the kitchen? So we are going to start by making our dough. And that is getting our green liquid base out of our refrigerators. 
We're gonna mix that with our flour. You are gonna need yours in a mixer, but I'm gonna need mine by hand because I love doing things the hard way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Once we've mixed that up and taken it to a nice smooth texture, that needs to sit for at least 30 minutes before we roll it out and fill it. We're going to take a little break at that point and give that dough a rest. Then when we come back to the kitchen after that rest, we will make our filling and then we will roll out our dough and fill. And we'll have to cut out little rounds because it likes the little rounds. Then we're both going to take our first attempt at folding a tortelloni. Yeah, how would you describe it? Like a crescent moon with a little cap or a little hat? You, a little yeah, little, it ends up looking like hat. a little hat. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's going to have a bit of a rounded top. And then you bring the two ends in. You're going to want to get the filling like really, really into the center of it as well. So that's another mm-hmm. reason it's a good thing to chop things a little bit finer just to make it easier to make that shape. Mm-hmm. You have to seal the the half circle first, and then we'll bring the little arms together to make the little hat. Okay. Yeah. Little folded hands underneath. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. Everything, like we said, is taking way longer than we anticipated. Let's hope that trend does not continue. But from there, it should be quick. Once we've rolled it out, filled it, made our little cute little hat hand shapes, then... We they cook super fast in boiling water and we just throw them into that sauce that we've made. Yep. A little light okay. saute at the, the very end in the sauce and yum yum yum. Yum yum yum. World level? I say this is a world level three, just because it's a bit fiddly. You got a lot of steps, it's gonna take some patience, and as Becca knows, pasta dough can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Ugh. It's like caramel. You just never like, know sometimes. We all have our kitchen nemesis. Nemesis? Mm-hmm. Nemesis? <laughs> nemesi. I think nemesis. Yeah. We are also using a rolling pin or a pasta machine to roll out our dough. We have already used a blender and a food processor and an immersion blender. We have also used a small pot, a small pot, a saute pan, a fine strainer, and we will use a large pot and another saute pan. Ugh, the dishes. World the level dishes. 100 for the dishes. Oh, the dishes. Oh, the dishes. Okay, I, let's do this. I, we're so fucking ready to roll out. We're to uh, We have we don't we're not even like we're at like negative steps still. So let's do this. Let's get out there. Okay. okay to the kitchen we go. Welcome to Onion Land. <laughs> We've moved to the kitchen and it is full of onion smell. Full of onion. It's so <laughs> oniony. Let's get more onions out and uh, start our pasta dough. So now we add our foamy or thin liquid component to our dough. I'm going to do a stand mixer. Mine says knead at low speed for 8 to 10 minutes. And okay. you're going to hand knead yours. So we will probably do another see you in the future situation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Future. We've needed. I didn't need anything. I watched needing happening. I watched Gretchen needing. I watched my stand mixer needing. But how did it come together for you? Pretty good. I wish the color was a little more intense. I think the the leaks have caused some problems with the water, the greenery going through and etc. Not as green as I was hoping for on my pasta, but this is where we are. Yeah, but the texture and consistency and stuff all came together with the or with the greens and the egg yolks and stuff being mixed before. Yep, everything looked good. This really, I think, might be one of my best pasta doughs of all time. We'll see. What? what? I know. Okay, that's, that's saying quite a lot. Okay. <laughs> And your thoughts on doing a mixer version? Yeah, I don't know that I'll ever try pasta by hand again. I I know that it's something I should perfect, but it was so easy. And because my arugula liquid was mostly arugula and very little leaks, 
it ended up being pretty green. And so into the dough, it did add quite a vibrant green. It's not as, it's still not as fun green as I think I had in my mind. And when it comes out, it probably will still be more muted, but it's not pale wheat colored, you know, it's <laughs> like a fun, bright it's green kind of thing. It's green. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, your, yours is very pretty springtime green right now. I was jealous. You were right. I was jealous. I saw mine come together and I was like, uh oh, Gretchen's gonna wish she'd done something more green, but but like, but now that we have this as a baseline, we've obviously been fucking around with the recipe however we want. Uh, it's something to do. And if you do it in the stand mixer too, way easier on your hands. How are your hands feeling after all that work? Because we should say real quick, it took, a, what, 12 minutes total for you to combine and knead everything at the end of the day? Just about, yes. How are you doing? So far, good. But you're right. I do want to go take some CBD before we get on to the rolling part and the yeah. folding part. Right. So our dough is in gla- in bowls with lids. We'll maybe talk about that in a second. But we've learned maybe that's an important part of everything is putting a lid on your rising contraption. But I might point out that the dough is resting so that gluten relaxes, not so that it rises. If you've got rising fat yeah. pasta dough, that not what we I, want. That's a not problem. what you want, Maybe. but I also go, don't know that that would be bad. Something to think about. Something to think about. <laughs> That's going to go for 30 minutes. So we are going to see you again in the future. So many, so much time traveling happening today. Yes. We're in the future. Our dough We're, has rested. We have filling made. To complete that filling, we took our finely chopped broccoli rob with shallots, garlic, and leeks in my case, and added that to, or added ricotta, lemon zest, the rest of our olive oil into those cooled greens mixture and mix that up with some salt and pepper. So that is all set to go. Our dough had a perfect amount of relaxed time. It looks like dough. Now we're going to roll it out. I'm using parchment paper. I'm going to put it between two pieces of parchment paper and roll it out with a rolling pin. And Gretchen is going to use a pasta machine to roll hers out. So you're doing the hand-stretched style, and I am doing the pressed style. Yes, as we've learned. As we have learned from our friend Marcella. So I've rolled mine out to a four setting on the pasta machine. I'm only working with a quarter of my dough at a time because that's the only amount I can get practically into this pasta machine. And I have a pastry cutter that I'm going to use to cut out some fairly large circles here. And that's how we're going to start our tartelloni. Are you going to cut all of yours out and then fold and fill or fill and fold? Yes. Cut them all out first. Cut them all out. Okay. Yeah. And I'm using a glass upside down to cut my. Yes. And I'm guessing my dough's probably thicker than Gretchen's, but it is what it is. Yes. Because you rolled yours out with a rolling pin. Okay, another time travel, and we'll be back after the rolling. We're back. We have cut our dough. We've stretched it out, cut it into rounds. Mine are very thick. They're like cookies, basically. Yeah. And (laughs) Gretchen's are beautiful and thin, and we're learning we don't need as much filling as we think as we try to fill these and shape these. Gretchen's making beautiful ones, and I'm working on it. Yeah, pasta is an art. It is a dance. So my rounds are approximately three inches in diameter that I've cut out. And I'm filling them with just about a teaspoon of filling. I mean, very, it seems an insufficient amount. But once you bend it, if you have too much filling in there, it's going to really cause you problems. And then I'm kind of wrapping it around a finger. And then pinching the two ends together firmly and then coming at it from the vertical axis and pinching it again, just to give it a little bit more of a tortelloni, tortelloni kind of feel. Okay. And we're just going to cook, cook a few just to taste and see how they do before we make them all. Right. Good idea. I had made a little bit of water and egg to seal these these pa- pasta packets up with 
And mm-hmm. the longer it sits, the worse it seems to make it to try and seal it. Oh, no. I think I have to put it on like just one or two at a time and then fill them and shape them. Okay. So don't pre-egg your edges. Mm-mm. It's making a problem. I keep oh. looking at this feeling going, this filling going, what is this yellow stuff? And then I'm like, oh, duh, the lemon zest. <laughs> how many okay. are you going to, how many are you going to cook the first time? Probably just four or five of them. I'm just going to do four. And then I might just put them in a little dish and then put some sauce on it instead. Yeah, of... not instead of doing the whole saute thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm on yeah. board with that. Okay. This is a tasting. And I am making sure to go over the edges pretty firmly with my fingers to seal, really seal it together on the half moon stage. So now it goes into the boiling water. And mm-hmm. it, this says for just until they float to the surface, but then leave for an additional 45 seconds. Let me grab my five bits of pasta. Come over here to my boiling water. In we go. Woo. All right, really full one. Don't you explode on me now. I know. Mine are so thick. I feel like they're going to have to cook for a little bit. I've got a floater. Already. Okay. Oh, oh, here comes another one. Oh, oh, wow. oh. Oh, there's number three. <laughs> and number four. Well, number four keeps coming up and down. Not really sure what's going on with number four. I'm cooked, I'm not cooked, I'm cooked, I'm not cooked. All of mine are sitting at the bottom of the pool contemplating life, it seems. (laughs) I do have the one with the most filling, which was the last one I put in, is definitely contemplating life at the bottom of the pot. (laughs) Nothing's coming out of it so far, knock on wood. Yeah. That's good. And it's staying relatively green. How's the color on yours? It, It looks like pasta with a little bit of herbal flex in it (laughs) fine i mean i guess mine have been floating for 45 seconds except for that last one i also bought some pecorino and romano to put on them because i thought that sounded good yeah that does sound good it's good good Mm mm-hmm it's delicious it's delicious wow okay all of it every part of it is something yeah cheese i haven't put any cheese on it but that's all the filling's good Filling is good. I probably could have left them in for a little bit longer after they floated. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, really good. Awesome. I'm happy with this. This is good. That's great. (laughs) Finally have one kind of floating. Is it going up and down like my fourth one? Do you think no egg makes a difference in the floating capacity or no? Uh, No, it should be size and the dough. Oh, yeah. Tremendous success, I say. Got some floating happening for a little bit here, so. Okay, I pulled mine out. I topped it with the sauce. I cut one in half because it's so big, so I'm about to bite into it now. It's so hot. (sighs) Too hot. (laughs) (laughs) Hold. (laughs) I know. Oh, hold. (laughs) It's very good. Mine's a little bit more dumpling than (laughs) tortelloni, but it's very good. (laughs) Yeah, I can see that where you know, this thick as your your dough was. Mm-hmm. A little too thick, so I'll yeah. thin out the next ones before I cook them. But it's really good. I I'm very pleased with how this turned out. Mm-hmm. Just trying to finish off my the last few rounds that I've done here. And I didn't brush these with anything, and that like, seems to work out all right. I've been using a little bit of water, but I don't know if it's necessary. I don't I think it is. With, I also I ended up with 19. Total? From your entire piece of dough? Oh, I've only used a quarter of my dough so far. Well, that's why mine are so thick. Yeah, you might have just wanted to roll out a piece of it at a time. Make me part well, of the thing. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I know okay. I can't do any more than the pasta machine can handle. Mm-hmm. I should have put it through there. Next time... When I try to make things easier, I just end up with dumplings. But they're not bad, so I'll take it. I think that's fine. Yeah. I wouldn't complain. It's a spring, yeah. a spring dumpling versus tortelloni. But that's, that's right. That's great. That is great. I love it. And thank you for talking me through all this today. It's fun to learn about leeks and to make our own version of this Verdi pasta. Mm-hmm. So I loved it. Me too. 
So like and subscribe. Tell people about us. And thank you for listening, Gluttoneers. And off we go. Off click, we clack, go. click clack. Click clack. Click clack. Click clack. <laughs> <laughs> turn, turn. Turn, turn. Turn, turn. Let me do the pasta. Oh, yeah. No, it's not going to come up. That's right, not, yeah, that go. didn't come through at all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Off we go. Off we go. <laughs>